Finance Fam, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is sparked by a tweet. I tweeted, I front loaded my retirement and if I never put in another dollar, I'd still retire with millions, assuming historical returns. Too many people are hesitant to lock the money up. It's not locked up. If my life went to, you know what, I could easily access it. Stop overthinking it and start planning. When I talk about putting money in a retirement account um, and investing it, a lot of people respond with, I don't wanna lock my money up. I do not wanna not have access to my money. And the thing that a lot of people don't get is if your life really went to that place to where you had no choice but to pull money out of your retirement account, first of all, you wanna have better planning before all of this happens and have your, you know, your wealth plan so that you know exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it and if you can actually afford to be doing it, that's the first step. But let's say, you know, you're in a situation, unfortunately, where you do have to pull money from your retirement accounts. It's not the end of the world if you are truly in a dire situation and you end up having to pay taxes and penalties on that money. There's a very strong possibility that in that given year, you may have no income. So your tax rate may already be on the lower side anyway, and you might not be that much worse off in the grand scheme of things from a tax perspective. So you can go and to your brokerage, to your retirement account, and you can pull the money out. There are just consequences like taxes and penalties. But depending on the situation, there may be ways to avoid that. There are some penalty exceptions. I actually did a whole video on penalty exceptions. You can uh, check it out. Basically, the point is, and the essence of this tweet was, don't stress it so much. Plan. You're not locking the money away to where you can't get to it till you're 59 and a half. You can get to it if you really, really needed it. There are some consequences, but you can manage those consequences with proper tax planning. So I got some responses to this tweet. Some were good responses. Some were snarky responses, of course. I mean, that's personal finance for you and that's what you're going to get. I did see that CPA planner retweeted me and I was like completely fangirling because he's a great follow for anybody interested in tax strategy. I got a response. Um, they were talking about inflation and saying, you know, it'll be worth millions by which time inflation would have gone up, uh, yada, yada. And I tried to explain that historically the rate of return in equities um, has been higher than the average inflation rate, which is true over the past hundred years if you, you know, do a look back. And that's why we invest in equities because we're trying to beat inflation because historically that has worked. Not saying it will work in the future. Um, and then this person replied that people forget about inflation, like his dad, for example, thinks that getting a $300 state pension um, is good, but in 2037, the $300 a week won't go very far because of inflation is what the, they're trying to say, which is true, but it's very possible that the pension could be inflation adjusted, might not match inflation, but it'll at least be something to help with purchasing power. But in the case of no inflation adjustment, then absolutely that $300 today is going to be worth diddly squat, you know, in 20 years from now or whatever. Um, but there are inflation protections with certain pensions. And um, so that's something to check. Even Social Security does cost of living adjustments. So this all led to this gentleman. I think it's a gentleman, Mike Barnes. Um, as I'm trying to explain, we're adjusting for inflation when we're doing assumptions. They said, you are talking to a wall, man. These CFP Fintwit people don't understand purchasing power. They think a million dollars today is a million dollars tomorrow plus 40 years. That's not true. Um, it's totally bizarre. This tweet is... I, what made me want to do this video? I said, we don't think that at all. We're constantly using inflation assumptions to take into account purchasing power in the future and adjusting investments based on that. So CFPs, aka certified financial planners, know exactly what purchasing power is. And we are taking that into account when doing any kind of planning. Um, this is actually my CFP um, exam book. Uh, this is our general principles book. And you can see that in 
unit five, okay, we have the time value of money concepts and calculations. Time value of money. Uh, time value of money is something we utilize to figure out purchasing power. Um, so I quote, if a planner wants to determine how much a future amount is worth in terms of its present today's value, a discounting process is used. That means we are taking into account inflation and we're discounting back to figure out what a future value is in today's dollars so that we know how much we need to be investing. So we absolutely know what purchasing power is. We know how to adjust. That's something that we are literally trained to constantly be thinking about and constantly adjusting for. It's in financial planning software where we're making assumptions, putting in inflation rates. In response to me saying that we know purchasing power, yada, 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 um, this person said, people need to be saving 50 to 100K per year to have any sort of real life in retirement going forward. Now, I completely disagree with this. Saving 50 to 100K in a year for most people is a extraordinarily high amount. That is high in income earner um, retirement savings, okay? Most people cannot save this kind of money. And people I see retire comfortably on saving much, much, much less all of the time. It's all about what age you're starting at, right? Like the earlier you start, the less you have to put out into your account for it to grow to the amount that's going to help feed you when you are in retirement. Not only that, you're working all your life to pay off your house. And if you have a paid off house in retirement that you you know worked all your life to do, which most people can achieve um, if they start and, and don't take out the equity and then cash out refi and charge up debt and stuff, you keep the equity in the home, don't touch the equity and you pay that home off. That is an absolute amazing asset for you in retirement. It's gonna help you when you're on a fixed income. One of the best hedges against inflation is a mortgage payment, a 30-year fixed, okay? Because it's fixed and it's not going to change as housing prices increase, which we're totally seeing right now. People that locked in a 30-year fixed at 2.9%, they're they're partying right now. They're happy, okay, with all this inflation, rent increases, all the things, right? So I completely disagree with this comment here that people need to be saving 50 to 100K per year. Most people can't do that. You need to be a high income earner to be able to do that. And I see people retire comfortably all of the time by mixing different strategies together. It's all about your cost of living too. It's all about the type of retirement you want to live. If you want to live a luxury retirement, then yeah, you're going to probably need to be putting a lot of money away. But most people just want to have their house paid off. They want to have enough money to survive and they want to be able to go on a vacation every once in a while, go see their grandkids. And that is very, very achievable. And you do not have to even have a million dollars in retirement to be able to actually live that life, especially with social security supplementing or pensions supplementing, right? And so I replied, that's not true at all with all due respect. And now I will probably do a video on this. <laughs> that's where this all came about. So I think that the, um, Next comment was interesting and thought provoking. It was, I think Mike has a cynical bias towards inflation, um, at, which is easy to have at this point in time. Yeah, because inflation is running rampant right now. There's always a risk of failure in products that you invest in, which is true. And perhaps he thinks the failure rate is higher in the future. 2007, 2008 could be tiny compared to what's coming. So I see where this person is, what they're trying to say completely. Um, I think a lot of people, I mean, sentiments in the trash can right now, everybody thinks we're going to see this big collapse in the stock market. I disagree. The economy is still humming along, believe it or not. Um, and yes, the consumer is kind of uh, taking inflation, they're taking some pain, but they're somehow uh, surviving and kind of holding things steady. The job market is pretty healthy. So there are our puts and takes here. But um, that is true that we can look at prior returns and we can see, yeah, the stock market returned 10%. You know, over the past X amount of years after inflation, it was about 7% um, annually, right? Um, we can look at that and say, 
the future is very unknown. Things have maybe changed here or there. Inflation is very high and it's, it's expected to be high for a bit. So that could definitely affect future returns. People have come out, um, investment you know, firms have come out left and right, analysts saying that they expect stocks to return less than they have historically going forward. And these are all things that planners are constantly reassessing, putting in uh, new new assumptions, putting in new inflation average assumptions, putting in new equity return average assumptions, and adjusting. So when you're doing you know, the calculations, you can always adjust conservatively, adjust returns down conservatively, adjust inflation up conservatively, and that's going to help make sure that you are protecting yourself just in case, right? And then Mike Barnes continues to tweet, but what really caught my eye here is this tweet. And then I have to pay taxes on the way out. He's saying that when you pull the money out in retirement, you have to pay taxes on the way out in addition to the FICA taxes that I had to pay on the way in. Um, That's a good point, but I'll get to that. It's not as simple as fantasy land, 8% forever minus inflation equals what I actually have. Taxes matter. Timing matters. Past returns do not predict future returns. So we know that. We know that, you know, historical returns do not mean that that's what we're going to get in the future. Okay. Um, Now the tax situation thing, we do have to pay taxes on traditional IRAs, traditional 401ks when we pull the money out, but you got a tax deduction when you put the money in. Okay. And so uh, that's, that's a benefit that you got on the traditional side. So that is being accounted for because you, you haven't, sure you pay payroll tax, you know, either way, but you do not pay federal income tax on traditional IRA or traditional 401k money when it goes uh, in. And so you're paying it on the way out and you're expected to have a much lower tax rate in in retirement. So um, that's being accounted for. And the same goes for the Roth side. If you're doing Roth IRA, Roth 401k, you're not getting a tax deduction today. You're paying taxes today, locking in today's tax rate, but you don't pay taxes on the gains in retirement. So I think the point that he's trying to make on taxes is is not really working here because that's how retirement accounts are structured to be able to give you a tax deferment or a tax advantage when you utilize them to begin with. So that's, um, I don't really agree with with this tweet. I, I don't think, you know, that's why we strategize which type of account to invest in based on your tax rate so that you can maximize and optimize your tax situation over your lifetime. That's why we do these things. And this tweet kind of goes to the point that I made earlier that, um, that it, it's okay if you're not putting away tons and tons of money. You know, you don't have to put 50 to 100K away a year to live a good retirement, you can have a strategy where you're working to pay off a house in your lifetime. You're putting away what you can. You're investing that money properly. I mean, 6,000 a year in an IRA, Mike is saying um, people should be saving for sure, but they really need to be saving way more than they think. And $6,000 a year in an IRA isn't going to cut it. It may cut it, it may not cut it, depending on what that person's goals are and when they begin investing. Jason Williams here, it looks like, replied to the tweet with this really great visual, uh, basically showing that the earlier you start investing, the less money you have to actually put into the account for it to grow to the same or more, right? Um, Someone starting at age 25, investing $100 a month for 10 years, from 25 to 35, they're 12, they only outlay $12,000, but the money grows to 141. However, someone starting at 35, um, investing $100 a month for 30 years from age 35 to 65, they had an outlay of 36,000 and it turned into 122,000, so much less. So starting really early, and this is a 7% um, assumption, 7% return assumption for this illustration. But the point is, is the earlier you start, the better. Back to what Mike said, that um, $6,000 a year in an IRA isn't going to cut it. Well, it might cut it. It might cut it depending on when the person started investing and uh, how long that money is going to be invested, uh, what that money is invested in and what the expected rate of return is for that uh 
portfolio allocation and also what their goals are. I'll just do a quick calculation. Um, $6,000 um, a year for, let's call it 30 years, okay? And let's assume like a low rate of return. Let's assume 5% uh, because they may have a, a mix of stocks, bonds, or they may uh, have lower returns in equities because we don't know what returns are going to look like. I'm just going to use 5%. So $6,000 initially invested monthly contributions, which equates to $6,000 over a year uh, for 30 years um, at 5%, uh, compounded annually. I could, you know, be more generous and compound it, you know, monthly or quarterly, but just to keep things simple. And that leads to, uh, in 30 years, this person having for contributing $6,000 a year for 30 years, they will have $424,000 at the end of the 30 years. And their outlay would have been $186,000 in contributions, but they will be getting a lot more than that at $424,000. So what this is showing is that, yes, Mike, it is possible for somebody to put away $6,000 a year in an IRA and actually have a pretty decent retirement $420,000 for a retiree that's getting Social Security, maybe they have a pension, and they have um, a paid off house, they can probably make that work pretty, pretty well. I know retirees doing it on a lot less, trust me. Um, and uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe for some people, they do need to invest more. It just depends on your lifestyle. Um, but don't forget that in addition to the $6,000 IRA that you can contribute uh, every year, you also have the opportunity to, to contribute to a 401k at work if you're plan offers it. If you're self-employed, you can open up a self-employed retirement plan, um, or you can just contribute to a taxable brokerage account and invest in a taxable brokerage account to let that sit and enjoy long-term capital gains later in life. So there are many ways to um, achieve your retirement goals depending on what your goals are. Um, so I just thought that um, it would be easier for me to, instead of tweeting back at this guy, um, do a video to kind of explain my thought process and and um, I think that Mike has a lot of um, a lot of good points, but I also think that maybe uh, Mike could use a little bit of education around how us planners are actually doing projections and taking into account um, purchasing power, inflation, uh, market uh, return assumptions and all of that. Like we're doing all of that. So hopefully that was interesting enough. If you are wanting to make sure that you're going to have enough money in retirement, um, definitely check out my Wealth Master Plan training program. I am a certified financial planner who built this to give basically anybody who wants access to sound uh, financial education and, and insights to get it because a lot of people cannot afford to hire a professional and they still um, deserve to get good sound financial information. Check out the link in the description below to find out more about that. Comment below. I mean, I'm just curious your thoughts. Are you overthinking this? Are you not contributing to retirement because you're worried about the money being locked up? Are you maybe contributing to retirement, but you're not sure if you're contributing enough? Um, let me know where you're at. I'd love to chat with you in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and catch you on the flip side.